in calculus, they're very comfortable with you know, doing derivatives and integrals and giving answers. And you know, they get really good at it and really fast at it. But if you step back and look at it, especially a few semesters from now when you're done, you're really just doing algebra, aren't you? It really is just algebra. This is the antiderivative, and I'm evaluating it. There's nothing theoretical in that. It's, I just did it. This is a little tricky because there's a limit involved. There's a concept involved. Wow, convergence versus divergence. But in the end, it's still going to be just some algebraic processes. And none of those are supposed to be terribly difficult. All right, let's do, uh, how about, um, Anybody got a gut feel for this one? I, I really want you to think. We're, we're going to answer the question, but does anybody have a gut feel? Uh, you think it converges or diverges? Because you, you can have to support it. Converges. Wait. 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 Come on, man. No. I haven't heard from you on this one. <laughs> it diverges. You're usually already on the next problem. What do you think? Well, first of all, the numerator is of degree one less than the denominator, so it could potentially be, potentially be its, well, its derivative, so one over u. And if that's the case, you just answered the question. If you think it's one over u, does this converge or diverge? It would diverge. Everybody understand what we just said? Now, it doesn't help because the degrees are all wonky, but if I think the numerator is potentially the derivative of the denominator, then through the appropriate substitution, I can make it look like a 1 over u. Coefficients aside, coefficients don't affect convergence and divergence. Coefficients only affect what it converges to. Now, if I put 1,000 in front, okay, then it's going to be 1,000 times bigger. But if it diverges, it doesn't matter because it's still infinite. Ah, so my answer is either infinity or some finite number. But the limit will it will exist ultimately. So my first step, again like before, is to do this. Uh, one to t, six x squared minus three x over four x cubed minus three x squared. Okay. All right. So like before. Let's do most of this off to the side. So off to the side, I'm going to do this problem. And I don't need to be clever. I think most of us agree a simple u sub would be nice. Now, if the numerator isn't exactly the derivative or a scalar multiple, we already know we can pull it apart and we can try other things. But you're probably going to have less of that going on right now, because right now we have a different goal. So your methods of integration you used before, you're not going to use that often right now. We're going to, the integrals themselves will probably be a little bit easier for a while because we're looking for a different goal. So what, what does my u have to be? It's either going to be the numerator or the denominator. denominator. It's got to be the denominator. Right. Because the chain rule factor cannot live in the denominator, but it can live in the numerator. So this will be what? 12x squared minus 6x. But I don't have that at all. Well, actually... I do have that. Yeah. By the way, you notice how I factored? I didn't factor out the x. I didn't factor out the GCF. No, I factored out exactly what I needed to to make it look like the numerator. So do I have a scalar multiple of the chain rule factor? Yes. Yes. So it's off by a factor of 2. So if I go like this, now it'll be exactly what I need. Agreed? I compensate by going like that. So remember, you cannot integrate unless you have exactly the chain rule factor. But now I do. So can I now write this in this form? Is that true? Yeah, we're, we're very happy with that, aren't we? And so this is now 1 half log absolute value of u plus c, which is 1 half log 4x cubed minus 3x squared. I, I, now, are there values of x where this is negative? 
I'll give you a hint. Slightly more than half the number line, this is negative. All negative values of x, for example. So I should do that. Yeah, 4x cubed, because x cubed is going to be negative half the time. So, that's it. We're going back to here. put the half in front, just so I don't have to worry about it. Now what have I got? The log of 4t cubed minus 3t squared, I can put that in parentheses because t is getting big, minus the log of what? Log of 1. Oh, that piece can't get zero. As t grows without bound, my argument is also growing without bound, and I'm taking the logarithm of it, and although that grows very slowly, it is still growing without bound. So, yeah. so my answer is? It diverges to infinity. Diverge, that's the best answer. I like that one. The limit is infinity, therefore my integral diverges to infinity. Infinity doesn't diverge to infinity. Infinity is my result. So therefore, the proper language would be the integral diverges to infinity. In the previous example, the integral converged, what was it, 3 over root 8. That would be the proper language. Now, right now, if you're leaving those words out, it's not life and death. But as we go further, you want to get used to do, saying it that way because that's kind of the nature of all the problems. We're going to say, here's something in front of you. Does it converge or diverge? If it converges, tell me what it converges to. If it diverges, so you go, oh, this converges to this number. This diverges to infinity. This diverges without limit. And then eventually, it's just it diverges. Okay, because the integral, the integrals converge or diverge. The series we're looking at are going to converge or diverge. It's going to be one or the other. And our goal is to figure out which one it is. Okay, questions? This, this isn't going to be terrible. I start every problem by rewriting it as a limit, and then I go through and I do that problem. And I come back and evaluate. It's, it's a different animal altogether. But what makes it work, my original picture where things were getting smaller, that's what makes it work. Okay. Do I need to do a lot of work on this? Let's do it the formal way. So I got 1 third x cubed, the limit of 1 third x cubed from 1 to t, which is the limit as t is going to infinity of 1 third t cubed minus 1 third. And I'm pretty sure that's getting really, really big. So that's infinite. My question is, could we have said infinity without really doing anything? Do you all agree we, we could say infinity without doing anything? But, but why can we? I don't think anybody can tell me that's infinity without doing anything. Here's the reason. Graphically speaking, isn't this getting smaller as x gets bigger? Just simply look at your integrand. As x grows, isn't the integrand approaching 0? It is. Oh, because the integrand is getting smaller, it still could diverge, right? Infinite painters, we, we messed up on the 1 over x fence because that's still got infinite. But 1 over x squared was cool. Tell me about this integrand. <laughs> it's growing without bound really quickly, isn't it? Because my integrand is already growing without bound, this is going to be infinite without doing any work. This is not the problem you're ever really going to see. It's that problem. It's the one where my integrand is actually getting smaller. And we're going to prove this one later. <coughs> if the thing we're looking at isn't approaching 0, then your answer is always going to be infinite. 
because you're getting bigger. If I'm getting bigger right off the bat, see these terms are getting smaller. The question is, is my area finite or, or infinite? It's getting smaller. If I drew the graph of this one, and I ask you for what's the area, well, <laughs> the area between the curve and the axis is getting really big really fast, isn't it? It's growing without bound. But like I said, this is a gimme. This is not the one we're gonna see. That's, we don't see this one very often. It's, it's actually quite unusual, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there.